So this project starts in my bathroom. It's not gonna be a vanity for myself since we already have a vanity. I didn't have a full build video for my bathroom here. And since the opportunity did come up, I figured it would be a nice chance for me to do the entire build video showing you exactly how I built my vanity. As you can see here, this is pretty much just a plywood panel finish for the drawer fronts. The difference for this vanity is we're going to go with a shaker style instead of a panel style that we have here. So let's go ahead and start this build. All right, first, let's break down some plywood. So I got all the pieces milled up, got the carcass pretty much milled up. I'm gonna go ahead and build the actual cabinet box. I got some of the finished panels uh, cut to relatively rough sizes. This is the Rifson white oak that we're using in between the rails and styles for the doors as well as the drawer fronts. For this build, the client wanted a shaker style design, so we're gonna go with the solid white oak uh, rails and style with the quarter inch uh, riffs on white oak panel here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and make our drawing reefs for the cabinet box and then put this cabinet together. I'm going pretty simple with the cabinet construction. I'm just going to use dados and rabbits to put the cabinet box together. I'm going to give the box just enough strength and also it'll help me align all the panels whenever I go to assemble the cabinet. I think dados and rabbits are a very good basic joinery technique that I think anybody can do. So if you haven't given it a try, definitely give it a shot. Having all the panels just simply fit together, it just makes the entire assembly process so much smoother. I did a partial dry fit just to make sure all the panels were cut to the right size. Once I confirmed that, I was able to get the panels glued together using some corner clamps just to hold it in place while I move things around because... I literally have no more room in my shop to work. <laughs> I'm cutting in three quarters of an inch dados and rabbits for the vertical panels, and then a quarter inch groove along the back side of each of these panels so that I can slide in my back panel later on. To secure the panels in this final position, I'm just going to use glue and screws. It's not gonna be seen, so having those exposed screws, is not a big deal. With the vertical panels in place, I'll go ahead and attach some of these top braces that's going to help keep these panels perfectly squared. That way, whenever I go to install the drawers, things aren't going to be out of whack. Because everything is squared, the back panel just slides into place. The right side of this vanity will be up against the wall, but the left side will be visible. So what I'll do now is create the finished panel for that exposed side using solid rifts on white oak. I'll mill down the rough wood to three quarters of an inch thick for the rails and styles. And I'll use a quarter of an inch white oak plywood for the panel. On the table saw, I'll rip these wider boards down to two and a quarters of an inch. That's going to give me the dimensions for my rail and my style. To create the slot for my quarter inch panel, I'm going to use a slot bit on the router table. This is one way of doing it since a slot bit is fairly inexpensive. The best way of doing this is to use a tongue and groove or a shaker style and rail bit, which I'll demonstrate later on because at the time of making this side panel, I couldn't find where my set of bits were, which is a pretty common theme for my shop, not being able to find things when I need them. Once I got the rail and style cut to the correct length, I'm going to head and glue everything together. With the finished panel dried, I can then connect it to the rest of the carcass using glue and pocket holes. Since this is a face frameless cabinet style, I'm going to edge bend all of the exposed plywood edges with rifts on white oak. I ripped down a few eighth inch thick strip and glued them into place. I love these edge clamps from Bessie for this type of work. It applies great pressure on these strips in such a small form factor. 
definitely need to pick a few more up. Now the carcass is essentially complete. All I have to do is give everything a good sanding before applying the finish. I like to use a rectangle sander for this. Helps me get into those corners a little bit easier. I'm also using a very fine grit sand pad. That way it won't eat through the top layer of this white birch plywood. Some areas the edge banding does stick out of the carcass so I'll go ahead and flush things up with a trim router. After shuffling through the drawers, I finally found that tongue and groove bit that I was missing. So I used it for all the doors and the drawer fronts. I'll first use the groove bit to make the slot for the quarter inch white oak panels. I'm not too worried about lining the bearing with the fence because I'm going to trim off the ends later. That would get rid of the small little curve inside the groove from the bit. And it's just really cool to see the cutter remove all this material. The one thing I was really focused on for this project was grain direction. I wanted to make sure that the grain direction on the rifts on white oak was continuous along the styles between each door and drawers. So I had to label and tape everything just to make sure that it was all organized. That was probably the most tedious part of this process. And also where the doors would meet, I used a full board, ripped it in half and maintained that grain orientation during glue up. This will allow the boards to look like a single wide board when the doors were closed. Another tip when you're using this type of bit is to add a piece of scrap wood behind your workpiece. That will help with any blowout as you're pushing the piece through. With all of the pieces cut out, I'll go ahead and glue everything together. When gluing the panels together, I'm only gluing the tongue and groove portion that joins the rail and styles together. I prefer not to glue the panel and have it freely float within the space. Even though the plywood is very stable, I want the rail and style to have that movement necessary to prevent any issues in the future. With the panels dried, I can go ahead and sand it all down to get it ready for finishing. So the cabinet is essentially done. As you guys saw earlier, I installed the bracing on top here, the top and back side right there. That's going to add some support for the cabinet as well as add some support for the countertop later on whenever the client installs that. And also I added these two brace pieces here. This is going to give me some support for the doors whenever it's closed as well as allow me to have an area for this false frame here. I can go ahead and just glue that on and tack it in place. And then it's going to give me a bit of support for the top of the door panel whenever it's installed. Uh, this is where the door could be pushed back into the cabinet, causing some damage to the hinges. So that's going to add a little bit of support there. One thing I wanted to point out is on the right side over there, I'm using a plywood finish panel. And on the left side over here, I'm using an actual um, shaker style finish panel. So now I'm going to build the drawer boxes. There's just going to be three drawer boxes inside this uh, middle compartment here. I'm going to dry fit all the doors, install the top panel, glue it in place. And once all that's done, I can go ahead and finish it out with some polyurethane. There are a lot of videos out there covering how to build drawer boxes, so I'm not going to go into detail in this video. Maybe in a future video I'll go over it, but it's fairly simple. I'm just using rabbit joints with some glue and nails to hold it together. That's pretty much it. To install the slides, I like to use a few sheets of plywood to raise it up off of the bottom. I'm going to use the same two sheets for both of the rails. That way the rails are going to be installed at the same height. With the slides in place, I'll go ahead and remove one layer of that spacer. That way the drawer box will sit lower than the slides and then I'll go ahead and install the rail. And I repeat the same process for the drawers above. And go ahead now and install the hinges for the doors. I'm using concealed hinges from Sugitsuni. They're soft close. And they're three-way adjustable so the client can adjust the doors later on whenever they go to install it in their bathroom. 
Having this Craig jig makes the entire process really smooth. With the doors in place, I can go ahead and install the faux panels above the doors. This will simply be glued and tacked in place, pretty simple. And I'll use a 16th of an inch strip of wood to make sure that there is a consistent gap between all of the panels. There is some adjustability with the door hardware, but I want to get it close to perfect at this stage. For the drawer fronts, once I get it aligned, I'll screw them into the drawer boxes from the back side with the help of a few clamps to hold them into position. What I didn't get to record was building the actual base for the vanity. What I pretty much did was build a rectangle box using 3 quarter inch plywood and then I just screwed it into the bottom of the vanity. Fairly simple, nothing too complicated about it. Once a client installs the vanity into their bathroom, they can just cover the plywood base with their baseboard. Finally, we can apply the finish. I'm using a few coats of polyurethane and will be sanding between coats. Instead of removing all the hardware, I just covered them with some painter's tape. Spending all that time before trying to get it all perfect, I'd rather just take this approach and not have to readjust anything later on. <laughs> I'm spraying the cabinet and the doors first, that way I can move everything into the house while I spray down the drawers as well as a matching medicine cabinet that the client also wanted me to make. I recorded the ending of this video before the client wanted me to install the door pools so I didn't have time to redo the ending but just know that there are door pools and I did get them installed before delivery. I use this awesome jig from True Precision. It takes out all the guesswork when it comes to installing these pools. I mean, if you've ever installed this hardware before, you know that it could be a pain in the butt. I really recommend this jig if you're going to do a lot of this type of work. And that's pretty much it for this build, guys. I know that it looks very complicated, but in reality, it's just really building boxes. So that's pretty much what all cabinetry is when you break it down. So hopefully it wasn't too intimidating. And I think that if you break down the process, you'll be able to build something like this for yourself or for a client. Um, but there are certain little details that I think makes this simple project stand out and elevates the entire build. Things like the continuous grain from this rail and styles, make sure they all match. And I think it's the small details like this that sometimes maybe a client may not see, um, but it really elevates your entire project. So I encourage you guys to just really take the time and just think about, you know, in this case, the grain direction and how it really affects the overall build of your project. So one thing I forgot to mention is I also use the same techniques on this vanity build here to make this matching medicine cabinet. On the inside, practically everything is white oak, rips on white oak, so nice little detail in there. I think it's gonna look really nice in their bathroom. So if you want daily updates on pretty much any project that I'm working on, definitely head over to Instagram. Um, for the future videos, make sure you subscribe. Let me know what you guys think, what would you have done differently? And maybe there's some tips you can share with me as well as anybody else in the comment down below. Until next time guys, this has been Ballard Design Craft Workshop. See ya.